and welcome to the Haverhill Journal, where we give you a quick look at what's happening now in our city. I'm Lindsay Paris, and on today's show, we're bowling a strike with our friends down at the All Saints Bowling Alley and watching a recap of what's coming to Haverhill in 2017. It's highlighted in the Mayor's State of the City Address last week. But first, March 15th marked the 320th anniversary of Hannah Dustin's capture in a Native American raid on Haverhill. All these years later, her descendants continue to preserve her memory through the Dustin Dustin Family Association at the Dustin Garrison House on Hilldale Avenue. A house that has stood for three centuries has a lot of stories within its walls. And Tom Spitaleri of the Haverhill Historical Society brought us inside to hear them. Welcome to the 1689 historic Dustin Garrison House here in Haverhill, Massachusetts. My name is Tom Spitaleri. I'm actually on the board of directors here at the Garrison House. And this year we are celebrating the 320th anniversary of the taking or capturing of Hannah Dustin. We're also celebrating the 320th anniversary of this building. Hannah was born on December 23rd, 1657. She was captured March 15th, 1697. She, with the later help of Samuel Leninson, who was a, another settler that was taken out of Worcester, he taught her how to scalp. They scalped the natives. She returned from captivity April 30th, 1697. They got the scalp money, and then she moved into this garrison house around that time. What is a garrison house? A garrison house is actually a military fort. There would have been soldiers living up in the attic. There would have been escape tunnels in the basement of this place that went out underneath the barn. There aren't many garrison houses open to the public anymore. There's one in Chelmsford, there's one in Kittery, Maine, and there's one in Dover, New Hampshire. This is the hearth. This would have been known as an industrial hearth. Most of your houses built in 1698 would not have a hearth this size. So when the alarm went off that the city was being attacked, the locals from this area of the city, would, the town at the time, would come into this place and they would light the fire because they would try to come down the big chimney that's here to get in. And this is how you would adjust the temperature. They didn't have turn dials back then. So the closer to the heat, the higher the temperature, the further from the heat. And then you see where all these pans are. You could actually put little fires out of coal fires in this area on lower heat to cook and boil water. And, and these were also used as weapons. If they got through, you could use these pans. They were heavy enough to knock people out. In the, another part of the garrison house, 1937-38, there was a fire that ravished this building. Because it was brick, it survived. When they redid it, they added all of this. This would have been one big open space. And we got the spinning wheel right here that was donated a couple years ago. The, according to the family that donated this, this was actually the spinning wheel used by Hannah Dustin. We do have a hairbrush here, if anyone's interested in ever getting their hair brushed. But no, reality, this isn't a hairbrush for people here. This is what they would use for sheep shearing and getting the wool off the sheep. They'd be brushing the sheep with this. I don't think I want to brush my hair with iron spikes. We are now going to head upstairs into the attic where the militia, or what we today we would call the military, where the garrison soldiers that were paid to protect this area of Haver would have stayed. You can see this is a wide open attic. If you look, at the timbers here and right over here, you can see where they actually they're still, and you can see the old wooden spikes that hold this building up. But there would have been two windows. There's only one in this house because they closed off the other one. But these little windows would have been where the garrison soldiers would have been shooting from. That area would have been wide open so they would see the enemy coming. That's how this building is held together. They would have not have been using iron nails, they would have been using wooden dowels. So they would have been drilling through this wood by hand with a hand drill to put those uh, pegs in. Very slow process in building back then. We have some upcoming events at the Garrison House. We're opening June 3rd, 4th, and the 18th. And we'll be open every, the first Sat the first weekend and the third Saturday of every month starting in June. There'll be some special events planned over the summer, so just keep an eye on the local newspaper and the TV stations they come up. 
The Dustin Dustin Garrison Association will be holding their rescheduled 320th anniversary celebration at some point in the coming weeks. To check their schedule of events, visit the Dustin Dustin Garrison House page on Facebook. The All Saints Bowling Alley, located in the basement of St. Joseph's School, is one of the city's hidden gems. As the home of bowling leagues, parties, and family fun for over 50 years, so, the Journal laced up our bowling shoes and skipped down to the heart of Lafayette Square to experience the All Saints bowling magic for ourselves. Welcome to the St. Joe's Bowling Alley, All Saints Bowling Alley in Haverhill. I am the manager. I've been the manager here for the last seven years. I've actually been involved with this place for over 40 years. I used to shoot pool back here and there used to be a game room back here. Uh, I met my wife, she worked behind the counter with her father. I started bowling back then in the early 70s. Uh, then about uh, 15 years ago, I actually walked away from the game. And when I retired from my company, Father Nason, which was the pastor at the time, offered me this job as a retirement job. It came back here seven years ago, and I've been here ever since. The first time I came here was back in the 60s when I was in high school. And I remember coming in here, and the chairs were actually church pews. And this was a fun, this was a rec center for the children. And as the years grew, my father-in-law expanded this alleys. And eventually there was eight alleys, and then in 1990, we, the early 80s, we put in two more and made it ten alleys. We are the only church now that has a bowling alley. We do fundraisers, we do uh, birthday parties, it is open to the public. We do have a couple of small leagues. And my, actually my daughter grew up on this alleys. And, when she was a baby, and we actually had her wedding reception after she got married in May down here, and we did the father-daughter dance on the bowling alley in her wedding gown. We've done everything from first communions up to weddings now, anniversaries. We've done Mardi Gras. We've done Christmas parties. Hi, my name is Stella Antonopoulos, and I work at the Plastow Walmart in Plastow. We're here tonight to raise money for Children's Hospital in Boston. And this is what we're doing, we're bowling. You come in, you pay your money, and you bowl. You just, I mean, nobody wins, nobody loses. We have little games like, okay, the next one that gets a strike, we'll give them a gift card. We get, most of our stuff is donated. We don't have a big budget because anything we spend, it comes from other children's and we don't want to do that. We do not advertise. This is by word of mouth. I know some people have put us on their Facebook. We've got great advertisement from people from our birthday parties. I didn't know it was here. Well, I knew it was here over the years, but somebody told me it was only like six lanes, so I knew that wasn't big enough. So I came down here, I talked to Joe Colella. He's the gentleman in charge. And I fell in love with this place. It's, it's so nice. It's just homey, and it's a family atmosphere. And look at the kids. They're having so much fun. And that's probably the reason why we picked this place, because it was in the city, and we wanted to help Joe get back into the swing of having his bolathons. Back in November, we had a uh, water let go upstairs, and we were down for 12 weeks. So when we, when we were down, they got this place out. Redid it up, made it look a little bit more up to date, and we opened back up on the 1st of February. Now he's done new floors, new walls, new ceilings, and they put a lot of sweat and love into it, and that's what we wanted to have our bullathon right there. The bowling sport is a very tough sport now. The children have so much more that they want to do. But when you see the birthday parties and you see the children when they're down here bowling, they have a great time. And the adults that haven't done it in a long time have a good time. So we try to keep our prices to a point that the, the younger families can enjoy it and come down here and have a good time. And that's our goal. We want the family to stay together for a couple hours, that's all, and just have fun and just bring back that old time bowling. When, when I was young and I used to bowl, now my grandchildren are bowling. So I think it's what we wanted to do. And I think this is a great place for the community. And we need to tell people about it, I think. I just wish more people would take the sport up and try to bring it back. It's a great young sport and it's a lot of fun. And you can have a good time when you just want to enjoy it. 
Saints is open to the public for bowling three days a week and weekends for parties and functions. For their schedule of hours, call 978-374-0083. A large crowd gathered at the new Hunking School on Tuesday, March 21st for the Mayor's annual State of the City Address. As part of his address, the Mayor and HC Media produced a video tour of the Hunking, the Bradford Rail Trail, and the Harbor Place Boardwalk. And local businessman Sal Lapoli gave an update on his downtown development plan. Watch as we share these excerpts from the mayor's presentation. This school is going to have over a thousand students. It's going to be an old-fashioned K through eight school. Welcome to the school library. And yes, kids still read books, and they come here to be able to take the books out. This is a K through eight uh, library. And here's how the kids have access to computers. These are called computer carts, and if you look into it, you see that every kid has access uh, to a laptop computer, and they can take that out and put it on the desk when it's needed. The most important part of education, though, is still what it was when we were in school. It's the classroom teacher, the kids, and the family. Not the high tech, that supplements it. Do you remember blackboards? <laughs> they don't have blackboards anymore. They have these whiteboards with these uh, projectors where they can project images on the screen. If you want someone to know about India, you can project up a screen of India. You want to talk about the book that you're reading. And this is how the teacher writes on the board. They don't have chalk. Uh, they just have this. And <laughs> that's supposed to be a two. Yes, two plus two is, even with today's modern technology, is still four. This last classroom is a special needs classroom. We know that some children have special needs. We have special teachers, special classrooms, special projects for them to work on. No child is left behind in Haverhill. We try to work with every child. Starting this spring, the Merrimack River comes to life. And late this spring, you'll be able to take a nice walk or ride a bike all along our brand new rail trail here in Bradford. Come on, let's take a walk up and I'll show you a little bit of it. We're over here behind the Roma restaurant. You can see the Basilea Bridge in the background and across the way you can see the beautiful Harbor Place development. You can see where the Lapoli development is going to be. And starting this spring, you'll be able to walk all along the river, walk over the bridge, walk along the rail along the boardwalk in Haverhill and then come on back to finish it up. This is about a one mile stretch between the Como Bridge and the Basilea Bridge and there'll be plenty of adequate parking right over here. Now let me show you what we have planned next for the rail trail. Starting next year we're going to extend the rail trail. Now this doesn't look like much right now but we're going to come under here, clean up that whole section there, cut through that wooded section right over there and I'll show you where we're going to come out. We're going to come out over here by this little railroad overpass, uh, which is right next to the Crescent Yacht Club and the beautiful new playground we put in a couple of years ago. Eventually, our goal is to continue up here towards Georgetown and Groveland and eventually be able to connect this boardwalk to Georgetown and Groveland and to the borders to Boston Rail Trail. Now, right over here in our beautiful new boardwalk, you can see the boardwalk in the background over there. Right over here is going to be the beautiful new project put together by the Lapoli companies. Hi, I first want to thank you for allowing myself, Sal Lapoli, representing the Lapoli companies, to be here tonight. I look at this as a very special night. And it's a special night because our great mayor, Mayor Ferentini, helped me put a project together like this. And he helped build a coalition between the city council and the planning board and all the people in Haverhill to bring you a very, very exciting project. It's called Haverhill Heights. And what that project is, is a 10-story building along the Merrimack River. And imagine beautiful restaurants on the first floor that spill right out onto the boardwalk, fire pits on the second, third, fourth, and fifth floor. You're gonna have job creation. We're gonna be bringing local residents an opportunity for affordable rates to be right on the river. And there's gonna be unbelievable, beautiful, penthouse apartments that are going to overlook the Merrimack River. And to cap it all off, we're also going to have a beautiful function space and a bar on the 10th floor. We'd just like to hopefully be part of the spark that brings other developers in and shows people that Havel, the waterfront, and other parts of Havel are great places to do business. And when you have such a warm and exciting city like Havel that embraces you at every board, how can you not want to do business here? So on behalf of the Lapoli companies, on behalf of my family, 
I thank you for this wonderful opportunity. Behind me, you can see the end of the boardwalk where it currently ends behind the Haverhill Bank. Starting later this year, we're going to extend this boardwalk to go up about 100 yards or so. And underneath there and extending outward, we're going to have all new parking, more parking than there is here today in order to support the beautiful Lapoli project. All very exciting things happening in 2017 in Haverhill. The Journal is currently following along with the progress of the rail trail. Watch for a special rail trail feature on our show next month. A Red Cross Community Blood Drive sponsored by the Haverhill Masons and HC Media is being held Monday, April 3rd here at the HC Media studio at 60 Elm Street from 1 p.m. to 7 p.m. All types of blood are needed and each and every donation will help save up to three lives. The donation process is easy and takes under an hour to complete. You can pre-register for the blood drive by calling 1-800-RED-CROSS or by visiting redcrossblood.org. Spring is here, the snow is melting, and all that bare ground needs a little TLC after a long, cold winter. Get together with your friends and neighbors and do a little outside spring cleaning at Haverhill's annual Earth Day cleanup on Saturday, April 22nd from 8.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. Register online for a specific area to clean and be entered into a raffle to win one of two bikes, compliments of Riverside Cycle. Online registration can be completed at activityreg.com under Haverhill Recreation. If you have a story or event you'd like to see featured on the Haverhill Journal, call us at 978-372-8070 or email info at haverhillcommunitytv.org. And don't forget to like us on Facebook or at our HC Media YouTube channel. And that's what's happening in Haverhill the week of March 30th. I'm Lindsay Paris, and we'll see you next time.